Today's class is all about how to have a healthy relationship with food this holiday season. And we've brought on Marissa Cardwell. She's a registered dietitian. She personally has, I have personally worked with her to help unwind a lot of the sort of like diet culture that's gotten in my head. And we, we're so happy that she's here today because she's going to talk about how you, how we can go into the holidays enjoying food and not feeling guilt, but with also not overindulging. So we can just strike that happy balance, have that happy relationship with food this holiday season. Hi everyone, my name's Marissa Cardwell. I'm a registered dietitian and personal trainer, and I have two little ones. And I own a practice called Olive Nutrition, and we specialize in helping people with eating disorders. And I am so grateful to be back on Seasons of Renewal to talk a little bit about how to heal your relationship with food during the holidays. And I spoke a little bit in my last class about my history with having an eating disorder. And I just wanted to share how that affected me during the holidays. Um, Thanksgiving was always a really, really tough holiday for me. And even the Christmas holidays, because these surround food, everything is evolving food. And I didn't know how to navigate that. And especially with Thanksgiving, I would make excuses to not have to go. I would work, I would run races. I would just do everything I could to avoid as much of Thanksgiving as I could. And then I would go for the meal finally after avoiding most of it and binge. And I would leave Thanksgiving every year just hating myself and being so frustrated and disgusted with myself and, and just not wanting to do the holidays and missing the whole point of the holidays. And I really regret all of those years of just being miserable through the holidays because of my poor relationship with food. And I'm grateful for the work I get to do every day, helping people to improve their relationship with food. And one of the first things that we do when we start this healing process is we talk about how food is nourishment. There's nourishment for your body and nourishment for your soul. And so fun, some foods, are nourishment for your body. They're full of vitamins and minerals and fiber and and they make you feel good and they help your body to work well. And, and long term, these are foods that we want to eat lots of because we feel good when we eat them. And those are good. We want to eat those. We love these foods. But also, I don't think you can have this full life and be able to experience all of the fun things that this world has to offer if we don't allow for some fun foods. And I don't call foods good or bad. I say some foods are really nutrient dense and some foods are more fun, right? So like the pie that we have on Thanksgiving with my family, not a lot of nutritive value, but that pie provides something for my soul that salad just can't. And so I think there has to be room on your plate for some fun foods. And I teach a lot of intuitive eating and with intuitive eating, there's no hard or fast rules. In fact, we try to get rid of all diet rules with intuitive eating. But in general, what I try to encourage is about 80% of the time you're eating nutrient dense, just foods that are full of nutrition and makes you feel good. And maybe 20% of the time you leave some room for some fun foods because when we make foods good or bad, we start to think about these bad foods and we put them in a part of our brain that has to constantly be suppressed. And this is actually called the ironic rebound effect because when we're constantly having to suppress, oh, I'm not gonna eat these foods, I'm not gonna eat these foods, you actually think about it more and more and more. And then when you're tired or frustrated or depressed, you've just had it for the day, then we have these screw it moments where all of a sudden we can't suppress those desires anymore and we overeat these foods. And so I see people cycle back and forth between, between restricting and not eating and not eating these foods because they're bad foods. And then in a moment when they're tired, they overeat and then they've eaten bad foods. And how do you feel when you eat something that you deem bad? You feel bad, it doesn't make you feel good. And so we want to, to not make, good, make foods good or bad. Foods are on the spectrum and all foods can fit. And so we talk about how to make these foods fit. And for the sake of time, I'm not gonna go through all of the foods that can fit on this. And I'm gonna story this later on my All of Nutrition Instagram. But in general, this is my plate that I teach with. And I encourage people to do a fist of protein and a fist of carbohydrates and a half a plate of veggies. And I find that when you do a half a plate of veggies, you're getting the fiber and the nutrients to feel full and to feel good. 
and to keep you regular and that really helps balance off the carbohydrates and protein that you're eating and this is just good for glucose management and for weight management and just long-term health i find that when you're doing a half a plate of vegetables that this helps to decrease your long-term disease risk so but let's talk about the protein and the carbs because most of the fun foods that we talk about i consider carbs typically and these carbs you know sometimes they're fruit sometimes they're starchy vegetables sometimes they're whole grains and those are great but sometimes this needs to be a piece of pumpkin pie and that's okay and and just try to balance it on your plate i say all foods fit there are no bad foods unless they're rotten or you have stolen it those are bad foods but besides that all foods can fit on this plate but i would encourage you to have a fist of carbs and balance it with some protein and some vegetables and then eat it and enjoy it and move on with your day. And so all I ask is that when you eat these carbohydrates that you eat them slowly and mindfully. And so with mindful eating, we chew thoroughly. We try to set our fork down in between bites and, and chew and taste and enjoy every bite of the food that we're eating. And I have two little kids, I get it. We can't always just be completely present when we're eating. But as much as we can, especially as we're enjoying fun foods, try to put distractions aside and taste and eat and enjoy. And when you do that, I find that most people, they come back and they say, oh my gosh, I can't believe how much less I eat and how much more satisfied I feel when I practice mindful eating. And so if there's one thing that you take away from this class, I would encourage just really slow down and practice mindful eating as much as you can during the holidays. And, and I know it's hard, we're all busy moms, but as much as we can. And so as you go and you try to do this plate method, and I will talk more and more about that on my site, as you try to do this, you're gonna have days where you overeat. Guess what, you're human and that's okay. We all overeat sometimes. And I think the key to long-term healing with your relationship with food is to bounce back quickly. So someone with a healthy food relationship will overeat and they say, mm, oh well, and they move on with their day. And there is no beating up and, and they don't feel the need to restrict or cleanse or repent or burn off calories. Those are all thoughts that aren't healthy long-term relationship with food thoughts. And so when we start to heal that relationship, if you overeat, it's okay. Take a deep breath and, and give yourself permission to just have that experience and, and see what you can learn from that experience. And then drink some water, go on a walk, do what you need to do and move on with the day and wait for the very next time that you are hungry to eat again. And that might be a little while if you overeat and that's okay. So we try to eat when we're hungry and stop when we're full. And so if you overate, just wait for the very next time that you feel hunger, which might be the next morning to eat again and just move on. And I find that when people are able to bounce back quickly, that we don't have these last suppers, we don't have these moments where one big meal, one binge might turn into a day's, a day's worth of binging or a week's worth of binging, or as I see a lot of people do during December is a month's worth of binging because why? They are going to start their new diet January 1. And so rather than have these all or nothing approaches, let's just try to have a moderate approach where all foods can fit, we enjoy the fun foods, we savor foods, and then we just try to enjoy the time with our family and friends during the holidays. And, and I know this is a really simplified, I went through a really quickly simplified approach, but I hope that this has helped to start your relationship with healing food for this holiday season. And please feel free to message me at All of Nutrition or contact me if you have any questions. I would love to hear from you. Thanks everyone, happy holidays.